Have you ever posted those or would she be mad if you did? I wouldn't do that unless she crossed me. Jay Ellis has some compromising photos of his insecure co-star Issa Rae. We'll explain. And we've got the stories that define the week on People in 10. I'm Andrew Belke, bringing you everything you need to know about pop culture right now. We've got 10 minutes, so let's dive right in with the first five. Starting with a top story this week, as Jessica Simpson gets candid about her sobriety. Jessica shared a photo of herself from the day she says she stopped drinking four years ago. She called the image an unrecognizable version of herself. She says that day was the beginning of her journey to take back her light. And in order to do that, she stopped drinking alcohol. Jessica felt that alcohol kept her mind and heart circling and made her feel exhausted. While promoting her memoir in 2020, Simpson opened up to people about hitting rock bottom on Halloween in 2017. She remembers zoning out from drinking to the point that she was unable to dress her kids. But she admits that getting sober wasn't a cure-all. She shared on Instagram that the real work she needed to do was accept her failures and the sad parts of her life and that she needed to start loving herself. And today, she does. Jessica said that she's now in a place where she owns her personal power and that makes her free. And in more of the posts you've been loving this week, Jay-Z got on the gram. The rapper racked up millions of followers since his profile went public on Tuesday. But he only followed wife Beyonce before deactivating his account a day later. For his first post, Jay chose the key art for Netflix's The Harder They Fall, which he co-produced. A new day is dawning. And Mark Wahlberg's daughter Grace is treating her dad to a little self-care, again. I thought Halloween was over. <laughs> She got me again. Back in 2020, Grace practiced her beauty techniques on Mark during the pandemic, and some things never change. Vanessa and Natalia Bryant showed off their style at this week's Gucci Love Parade fashion show at the Hollywood Walk of Fame, joined by friends Dwayne Wade, Gabrielle Union, and Zaya Wade, as well as EJ and Cookie Johnson. The group shared lots of behind the scenes peeks, including some epic selfies, a video practicing their best runway walk, and a glimpse of the Kobe Bryant mural in the distance, which was unveiled back in June. Cal Penn revealed this week that he's engaged to his partner Josh, and the actor is sharing the couple's 11-year love story in his new book, You Can't Be Serious. Cal and Josh met at a bar, actually, um, when Cal was in Washington, D.C., working at the White House. And their first day, Cal writes in his book that he wasn't at all sure this was going to work out. Josh showed up at his apartment uh, with an 18-pack of Coors Light, promptly sat down on the couch, and turned the TV station to NASCAR. But fast forward a few months, and there they were watching NASCAR together every Sunday. In the book, the 44-year-old also details his coming out experience. Cal says that he discovered his sexuality relatively late in life. And when he told his parents and closest friends, he said it went really well and he felt super supported. He jokes that once you've told your Indian American parents that you're gonna be an actor, everything else is super easy. This week's People Cover star is America's favorite judge, Judy Scheinlin. The 79-year-old is opening up about her career, including her decades-long stint on Judge Judy. Had a good time. Thanks a million. It was a great run, changed my life. I wasn't sad. I wasn't sad because I had another adventure awaiting. And I think the time was right. It was 25 years, it's a nice round number. And we left on time. Judge Judy came to an end this summer, but now you can catch her new show, Judy Justice, streaming on IMDb TV. Life happens, <laughs> passes by. And all of a sudden you pass a mirror and you say, who was that that invaded my body? <laughs> but if the journey that you've made has been a wonderful journey, then it's fun and you just want to keep going, which is why we're doing Judy Justice. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh is not an answer. Moving on now to Justin Bieber and Haley Baldwin, who are opening up about their bond. You've seen my heart through it all, and mm -hmm. um, I could cry thinking about it. On the new podcast, In Good Faith, Justin candidly reveals how his wife helped him through his mental health struggles. Haley just accepted me as I was. Even when we got married, there was still a lot of 
damage and hurt that I still needed to work through. The pair said, I do, in September of 2018. Just months later, Justin sought treatment and spoke publicly about the depression he suffered two years prior amid his Purpose World Tour, which was ultimately called off. I realized it was like some serious healing I needed to to go through in order to get to a place where I could be in a healthy, serious relationship because I had a lot of trauma and scars. So I just committed to working on those things and getting healthy. Something Haley says she supported wholeheartedly. I was in it. I made a decision. I know for a fact that I've loved this person for a very long time and now would not be the time to give up on him. I just wouldn't do that to him. All right, now let's switch gears to some screen time. I'm joined now by Jay Ellis, one of the stars of the hit show Insecure, which is airing its final season now on HBO. You're from LA? Yeah, I mean, no. I guess, yes, but not really. For these final five minutes of the show, I'm gonna ask you five questions. For question number one, you have to give me one answer. For question number two, you have to give me two answers and so on. Let's get started. You play Lawrence on Insecure. The show is now in its fifth and final season. So what is one emotion that describes how you're feeling right now saying goodbye to a show you've worked on for half a decade? Grateful. Yeah, grateful. From the very start of this thing, we fell into this groove where we became a family like really, really fast. Like back to school, it was like every year we got super hyped to go back to school, couldn't sleep the night before, we got to be together, and then we go away for summer break, and then we premiere the show, and then we come back and we shoot it again. And so knowing that I'm not gonna be doing that again, it's a little heartbreaking. But on the flip side, like I'm grateful and like excited that we got to do five seasons of the show Issa wanted to do, and people still care, and they're still like dying for what's gonna happen next. Your character Lawrence has a relationship with series creator Issa Rae's character Issa D, but it seems like the two of you get along very well in real life too. So what are two things that fans might be surprised to learn about Issa and your relationship? She makes fun of me constantly. <laughs> don't do this, don't do this. About what? It normally it's dad jokes, to be honest with you. She says I'm like full of dad jokes, which I don't think I am. You gotta stay ready. Yeah, me very yeah, all night, you gotta stay ready. You never know what's gonna happen. They might call my name. <laughs> and then I have a collection of pictures in my phone of Issa Rae falling asleep at work, like taking naps whenever she can get a nap. Because she had 26 jobs on this show, let's be real. Have you ever posted those or would she be mad if you did? I wouldn't do that unless she crossed me. What was the number one way that the cast would bond? Usually every single hiatus, Issa, Yvonne, and myself would all get together and like go grab brunch, go grab lunch, drinks, whatever it was. Issa's really good at like celebrating and at recognizing how hard like we've worked in a particular moment. And then our text chain is like, honestly, I live for it. I, every single day, I can't wait for these girls to send a text message. Mm -hmm. The stuff that goes back and forth between Natasha, who's crazy busy and hilarious, Yvonne, who's crazy busy and hilarious, Issa and myself, like just the stuff that goes back between the four of us is priceless. Jay, one thing that you and Lawrence have in common is fatherhood. You became a father in 2019 to a beautiful daughter, Nora Grace. So what are three unexpected joys of being a dad? I love getting up in the morning. I'm tired, tired, but I love getting up in the morning and going to get her out of her crib. Uh, didn't see that coming. Like on the flip side of that, she goes to sleep at like eight o'clock at like 10 PM, I miss her. And then that laugh, man. There's something about getting your kid to laugh and hearing them just laugh uncontrollably that is like one of the most like magnetic things on the planet. There's a joy there and an imagination there. Insecure is sadly coming to an end, but your career certainly is not. You are very busy. So what are four future projects you're really looking forward to? I gotta start with this movie that I'm on now. Somebody I used to know, written by Dave Franco and Allison Brie. Dave is directing. Allison, myself, and Kiersey Clemens are starring. It's just a super talented group of folks. Number two, I'm working on a book about my childhood imaginary friend called Did Everyone Have an Imaginary Friend or Just Me? Some of you guys may know this already, but when I was a kid, I had an imaginary friend named Mikey. And that has been fun. It's just a collection of stories from my childhood about like stuff, trouble rather than me and my imaginary friend got into growing up. Third thing I'll say is I'm producing a podcast that will come out in February called The Freeway Phantom. It's about a serial killer in the 70s in Washington, D.C. who would dump his victims' bodies on the side of the freeway, who were primarily black and brown girls. So very excited about that and such powerful storytelling. 
And then last but not least, I mean, Top Gun, you know? I mean, come on, how, how could I not bring this one up? Like, it's been three years in the making. It's been absolutely amazing. It's changed my life in every single way. And I'm friends with Tom Cruise, you know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. I, I'm gonna call him my friend. He may not say that, but I'm gonna say it. All right, Jay, give me five words to describe the final season of Insecure. Growth. It's a lifelong journey, girl. Full circle. Sorry, ma'am. No, okay. A heartbreak. Yeah, I, uh, I know. Laughter. <laughs> and worth it. I love this bitch! Yeah. <laughs> Which isn't really one word, but you know what I mean. Jay, thank you so much for being here. And everyone, be sure to check out new episodes of Insecure's Farewell Season, Sundays on HBO. All right, time's up. See you next Thursday.